Welcome back you guys. Very, very interesting build video tonight. We happen to have had the opportunity to get our hands on the G3C. Now, before we jump into this, uh, there's a good chance we may end up with more questions than we have answers as this video goes on. I know for a fact it's going to be a long one. There's going to be a lot of talking. We do have cut work. We are going to get into that. First and foremost, I want to thank Mr. Carter from Louisville, Kentucky for supplying the slide as such a new slide. We haven't been able to locate any of them here uh, within the vicinity here in uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. So big thanks to the individual giving us the opportunity to do something to the slide for them to forfeit that over when it's a new weapon. Obviously they're hard to get. Uh, so it takes a lot. Uh, it says a lot and it means a lot for uh, an individual just to hand something over and let's say let's do it with it being such a new thing and they're giving up such a nice uh, nice toy. So with that being said, let's uh, let's jump into it a little bit here. Uh, before we get into the cut work, let's just talk about the slide as a whole. We are going to be doing a disassembly on uh, the slide. We do have questions that we've seen online. I know that this is a change over the standard G3 with the C being shorter. Obviously it has a different set of sights. We do want to um, just do a real quick uh, internal note on the, the parts. Are they the same? Are they not the same? I'm going to do my best to answer those, uh, those questions and we're going to do that in front of you guys. I've not taken this apart yet so we're just going to kind of see what we come up with. Once again we've got some optics. We, got, we have just the tools that are needed in order to remove um, all the internal components of the slides so we can get kind of down to those details. So first and foremost, let's just take it apart and um, we'll just kind of um, take it like that. So what we're going to first do is, uh, this isn't something that we typically do in our videos and I'm working behind the camera so we'll work our best. We're just going to push this guy in. We're going to remove the rear cap just enough for it to pop off like that. We should be able to slip that out and pull out the firing pin assembly. We'll move that to the side. The extractor has a couple of different pieces here. What we're going to do is we're going to press in on the lowest one. See if we can get this once again working behind the camera. Press in on the lowest one. We should be able to slide that over just enough to where it has a little bit of a crack right here. You can see a little bit of a gap. At that point you can usually put your couple fingers over here on this side and push this apart. And what it'll do is it'll pop out and you won't lose any of the other parts. So extractor. Then we end up having the small plunger with the spring. The large plunger spring still intact and of course sometimes they use like a packing grease on these and we'll end up having the extractor spring right here. So we're going to just set that aside. These are all just uh, pieces for the uh, for the extractor and for the firing pin, the safety and some things like that. So guys that's pretty much it with the exception of the sights. Now we're going to get down to the details of what does it take to remove those sights and do the Glock sights work? Is it just a seamless transition? So let's take the front one apart first. We're just basically going to take our nut driver with our correct uh, Allen. We're going to put this in here and we'll see if we can get this guy to back out. I really want to give, give you guys just a feel for what does it take to remove this. And that is, no, honestly, it really just doesn't want to come out. Oh, we're going to have to re revisit that and get another tool that's a little bit tighter. Guys, let's take the rear sight off and I'm going to bring you guys back. All right, guys, well, we are back. I knew this was going to be a little bit of a challenge. I just didn't realize it was going to get the best of me. So uh, we're going to add a little bit of a clip here to show you what we actually had to do in order to remove the front sight. Guys, it was absolutely crazy. I've taken a ton of slides apart. I've seen a lot of different stuff, stuff that's just been jerry-rigged and put back in and stuff that's come from the factory that was not exactly in line with the factory with all the other slides I've done. And this one, I... I I really just don't know what to tell you. I cannot tell you if this is the standard. I had a major issue with the screw here. Uh, so much in fact that I ended up ripping the, the head off of the screw as far as the threads go. I mean, I didn't really remove the head, but I ripped the threads out. And on these Taurus screws, if you've ever played with the G2C or even the other G3s, is that they actually have an Allen, which is a larger socket. And then inside of that, there's another Allen uh, well. So you can actually use two different sizes. In the event you strip one out, you could actually go down with a smaller size. It's kind of a uh, kind of a failover or a backup plan. In this particular case, I ripped them both off. So there were absolutely no threads left. I, I got in my mind to the point of like, maybe this is like a left-hand thread? Like I don't, you know, since this is totally new to me on this one, um, it's a steel sight. We don't see that on the other ones. It was odd. But guys, let's get back on track. One of the things that you're going to notice is... The amount of, I don't know what you want to call it, epoxy, Loctite, thread locker, fill in the blank with whatever name you want, but the slide itself had an absolute absurd amount of 
thread locker, epoxy, or, or something in there um, that obviously was keeping that screw from, from moving and backing off. Uh, we basically removed uh, the screw. It was not that big of a deal. I've tried a lot of different things, and at the end of the day, I just whipped out the laser and said, let's cut a hole through the top of it and put a, put a straight blade on there. Let's remove it that way. Take the caution I'm giving you, and that is, if it doesn't seem like it's going really well for you at the beginning, it's probably going to get worse. So, um, you know, maybe this is an opportunity for us to, to offer service. I, I don't know. I'm not even sure I want to get into that. Um, let's get back on track here. Sorry about that little uh, sideline there. But, the, you know, hey, this, this is true life. This is what's going on here. We're not just showing you the best of the best. We're showing you A through Z, and, yeah, some of it could be bad. Let's see if we can knock this site out. I don't know what it's going to take. It probably will just push out. Look at this. We're going to have to go back through another video. No, probably not. I'm just kidding here. I'm, I'm sure I can get it out. What we're going to do is um, on the back of these towards what would be the front of the slide, there's a little bit of a ledge there. We do have the opportunity to probably just hit it. Yep, there it goes. It goes fine. Let's go ahead and grab it. And let's show you what we got here. So um, there is a shank on what would be the bottom part that goes into the slide on the top part here. So you can't just like twist the top and expect the screw to stay in place and you'll just kind of finagle it loose between the two and then you'll break it free. It's just not going to work that way. Let's take a look and see what we have here. So we have an absolute ton of, of some kind of epoxy they've put on here. So much in fact that there's actually a ledge still in here of, of it as well. So I, I don't know what to tell you on that. It is what it is. Uh, you know, you kind of know what to expect. We'll move this to the side here. Let's take a look at the rear. Um, and of course, the idea here is to get into do the Glock Factory sites work or is this just an absolute hassle for, for nothing? So we'll see what it takes to get this guy out. We're just going to use a little uh, nylon rod here. It is a steel rear sight as well. I'm going to do my best working behind the camera. Usually this is not how we would approach this. I would usually use a pusher or um, the vise. I would definitely hold this in the vise. But let's just show you guys what we have here. See if I can get it out with this baby hammer we've got going on. It's moving. Yeah, we're about maybe halfway-ish. Really? Oh, that's interesting. So you can see that there's a double ledge here. So there's a low ledge and there's a high ledge. I'm just going to take a note here. It doesn't look like this edge is, is pointed. Sometimes there'll be like a, a roll in. Um, We'll see what we can get. If we can't get it with this. Yeah. That guy doesn't want it. We're going to have to get out the real ones. All right. So we're basically just going to use a brass punch. Once again, this would work a lot better had it being held in a vise. We're going to use a, a, a framing hammer. We're going to slip this guy out here. And we're almost there. So the idea behind this is that you can take... Um, Hmm. Okay, so we are out. This doesn't really mean anything with the brass. Um, this is a pretty common thing if you're going to knock them out this way. Uh, basically, if you, if you catch the brass, once it uh, gets onto the site right now, it almost always rubs right off. We do use, obviously, a cleaner to remove these. This isn't your typical how we remove something. Let's take a look at it. It looks pretty, pretty rectangular to me. I'm seeing square edges. I'm really not seeing any kind of you know, goes in left, comes out right kind of a scenario. I don't really see that so much on the rear of it. I'm not seeing it. I mean, maybe in the right light, it looks like there's a little bit of a bow here. So maybe it would, it would be easier coming in and out of the right side than the left side. That's, that is a guess without taking some measurements, putting it in a vise, taking it outside, looking at it. I may have a different opinion as we get a little bit further into uh, the completion of this, but once again, this is a kind of a learning thing. So, um, yeah, so we're going to set this aside. This is a steel site. Not a big deal. We'll get that thing cleaned up. Um, in this particular case, I think the customer is replacing the sites. Um, but, yeah, that we would be able to remove that off there. Let's go ahead and see what we get with the Glock site. So this is just a set of Trigicons. We've peeled off the outside here, but we can still see the tab up here that says Trigicon. Let's go ahead and kind of just do a real quick open up. It's about 95 degrees in North Carolina right now. Um which isn't really all that great. So just bear with me on that. The most important one I know you guys are all curious about is the front. Does the front fit or not? The front does fit. It seems to be a, 
It's an okay fit. It's not too bad. I'm not sure what we're going to get with the screw, the way that it's designed and set up in there. Sometimes the screws are really tight. It is a fit, though, so that's not too bad. Um, let's take a look at the rear and see if... Yeah, it seems to be a pretty straight fit there. I'm still kind of curious as to why we're seeing a... Um, well, I guess we're seeing it on both sides. You guys can kind of see they have a notch cut out here. It's like a half circle, and then there's a, a top span, which is higher. And then if you were to look at it this way, there would be another half circle right there. So basically the edges would be lower, the top would be the highest, so the top is, is really squeezing the site in. And, and you, In other words, you should be able to slide it in till about to where you pass over the low part, and once you hit the top part, you should, you should be starting to see some tension there. So ultimately that's going to kind of answer a lot of your questions for that it seems to be pretty straightforward these are trigicons i'm sure they're all going to fit so a little bit of play here i would say there's a little bit more than maybe what you're going to get with a glock glock hole i don't think it's anything major you're obviously you're able to tighten that up um so let's move on to optics what optics work with this thing right so let's move this side th that aside and uh Let's just kind of see what we come up with here. So the inside, there's no real internal holes that we have any issues with. Um, I will take some measurements for myself from where the firing uh, pin uh, liner is. I guess it's, it's the widest part that you'd see of the firing pin. So what we're going to do is we would normally take a measurement from the top of the slide to there, figure out what our distance is. That will give us our depth. Okay. The other thing to take note of is if any of the optics hang over far enough to hit where any of these these plungers are for our extractor, what is that depth that we have a maximum amount before we have a spring pushing on the bottom of an optic? So those are also things to take into consideration. Let's just kind of go down through the list of what we know is going to work, and then we're going to get up to what we aren't sure about. Um, Vortex Viper, we obviously have a lot of room here. I'll try to position you guys where you guys can see. So we definitely have a, a good amount of room left in the front. We have plenty of room in the back. Um, normally we would probably do it like to offset what we do with the Glocks where there's a, a somewhat of a thin wall leaving more of a gap in the front. Obviously that's because there's springs and things in the front and the depth could come into a problem. But the Viper seems to be okay. Let's take a look at the Venom. The Venom also uh, is going to support it with the screws. We don't have any issues there lengthwise from dovetail to where the barrel locks up. We're pretty good there. We have the Leopold Delta. We're going to fit there. I don't see any issues uh, looking down and through here where the screws are. So that's another nice one. Uh, one of the things to take into consideration, now it looks pretty good since there's absolutely nothing in the back. This could go to the back. Um, you would have your corners sticking out, if we can catch this a little bit here. Your corners would be sticking out, but you could do a front of optic dovetail, so that's an option as well. Obviously the micro is gonna fit probably the best. This is the same as your Romeo Zero, your RMSC, your RMSW. Um, this is obviously, the, this is the K model, the 507K. Um, lots of room there, so you've got all kinds of, we want it to the rear, we want to remove the dovetail, we want it to the front, we want to do the rear, we want to add a dovetail, we have lots of options there. So the one that is, is the most um, requested, obviously, is going to be the Trigicon slash Hollow Sun. Does it fit? Does it work? What are our options? The biggest issue that we typically see with this is the screws won't support the slide, or, or reverse that, I should say. The slide won't support the screws. So basically, we have enough room to mount this. But the biggest issue we run into is that, see if we can do this a different way. This is technically the widest part of the slide because it's tapered, so it's thinner, thicker on the bottom. If we actually were to take this and put this down here, your screws actually would work, okay? So in other words, the slide is wide enough to support the screws on the bottom of it, on the widest part. If you were to flip this over because the top is tapered and put it where it roughly goes, you're, you're really gonna end up starting to see some light down through there. You can kind of see a little bit over here. So if you have this pretty close to center, what you're going to find is that both of those are probably going to end up causing screws to be protruding out the side. Now, one of the things you could maybe get away with, never tried this, would be to, if you could cut it deep enough and the hole was large enough, let's say for a Viper or a Venom, you could maybe drop this guy on here and see, do the, do the depth. As we get deeper, we get wider, there's a possibility it could support those screws. So under normal circumstances, I would say this is probably a no-go. Further review and investigation of this, there's a possibility. Um, the width looks to be the same as the, the standard G3. So ultimately, we don't offer it on that. We probably won't because the screws would be so uh, close to the edge of the wall that you're probably gonna be protruding out the side or there's a good chance of just stripping it out and ripping it out through the side. So um, I would say the Trigicon Hollow Sun is probably a no-go on the full size. Obviously, you have lots of other options. There are other optics on the market, the sight mark we've done. Um, so there's a lot of different ones. The um, 
the Nikon Spur is another one. It could probably be done. So there are definitely some options, but hopefully this gives you guys an understanding as a, uh, an owner of the slide, what, what optics should I be purchasing? What are my options for that? Of course, when you go to our webpage, if you add it to the cart, it's gonna ask you what optic you want to have the slide cut for. So it's gonna give you those options. As we learn new things and you go to our webpage, you'll be able to actually click on G3C and G3 optic cut. You can click on that and of course, it will give you a list of, of what's supported as far as the optics. You guys as service providers, if you haven't had an opportunity to have one of these hands, maybe you don't have all the, all the optics in front of you, hopefully this video has also encouraged you a little bit more on uh, what can be done. So if you have not been subscribing, we do recommend you subscribe. We are trying to take a little bit of extra time here and run you through the hurdles of what you're getting involved in, what your options are. So if you are a provider, you know what you should be doing. If you're an owner, you know what you should, you should be shooting for as far as the optic itself that maybe you want to have mounted on there. Let's get down to the actual work that we're going to be doing on this slide itself. So uh, one of the main things that we're going to be doing is we are going to be doing the 507k optic cut. So this guy's going to go here. We're going to keep the rear dovetail in place. We're going to cut this to a maximum depth, which we may or may not talk about. We're going to figure that out as we get a little bit farther into that. The uh, Glock front and rear suppressor sights will work. Um, so that's a really nice added upgrade. Now, one of the other things that we uh, do want to mention here before we get into the cut work is the front of the slide is significantly shorter than the standard G3. So we're going to be doing a pattern that we haven't really done before, especially on a Taurus. I'm going to draw it out for you roughly. We want to make sure that we leave enough room from where the barrel is to where a hole is, that we don't have any issues there. We also want to make sure that we don't come too far forward as the walls actually start to get thicker up in this zone. So the idea is, is that we're going to be doing something along this line. This is not drawn exactly to scale, we're just roughing it for you guys. So we'll come in, we'll come up, we'll come over, we'll set that down. We'll go down to a depth to where it's coming down the side enough to see in through here. So this will basically be a hole. So I don't 100% know the depth that we're going to be doing because I haven't drawn this up yet. This is just the intro to the video. But the idea is that we'll end up taking off this material here. We'll be able to see down in at an angle. This will be a topped cut, so three-sided, one, two, and three. And then this will be a straight cut across the side. Okay, so this will basically just come down the side so that way we can see through there uh, clipping the top of the uh, slide. So a pretty interesting design. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how it turns out. Guys, let's, uh, let's uh, finally get over to the machine. Let's get the cut work done. We're going to navigate our way through the coloring and um, just kind of see what we come up with in the end. I'm sure I'm going to have some more thoughts on this as, uh, as this unfolds. guys let's take a look and see exactly how this came out in the end uh, obviously I learned a couple of things with this being the C model and it being so much shorter than the standard G3 uh, we are limited on what can be done and once again I did learn a couple things so I want to teach you guys or at least educate you a little bit on options and what you might run into in the event that you want to choose a certain service so let's just talk about the cut work then we're gonna jump into um, options and what what that means very, very pleased with the way this came out on the front of the slide here. Uh, nice, nice barrel exposure down through here. Now, of course, we don't have a barrel here, so uh, with it being just so new, the customer didn't end up sending it, and uh, we we're just grateful to, to end up getting it in hand to do the work, but we don't have a barrel here, so we're not gonna be able to see that. No doubt we'll take some pictures outside under the natural light. You'll be able to see 
Um, kind of the exposed area of where we would be able to see the barrel. Of course, other services like a Cobra nose would definitely be able to be uh, added to something like this, to this package to be able to see even more. Um, definitely a awesome design. I like that center strut that's kind of left over because uh, since we are able to use Glock sights, that means some of the longer model sights like you would see like a fiber optic, I know True Glow makes some, they're kind of long. They would come probably up into where maybe if this was a, a, a tipped cut, somewhere up into here. So no doubt leaving that extra uh, center peg is, is gonna be really cool. It's gonna look really good too, I think overall, whenever you do change your sights out. And I can see most people are probably gonna go right straight to let's change the sights out. It's like what well, a lot of people do with the Glocks. They have plastic sights, let's get rid of them. Let's go to something that's a steel sight. So in this particular case, it's let's get rid of the steel sight. Let's go to something that we, we would rather have a night sight, a fiber optic sight, uh, something along that line. Let's talk about the optic cut itself. Now, one of the things you'll notice on here is we left a pretty good amount of, of uh, material between the iron sight and where the rear of the optic is. You know, there's a lot of room on a slide like this, and since we're still learning where we want the placement to be, how we want it to be, um, we're still adjusting those, those marks and those measurements, and of course, each optic is gonna be a little bit different with this being obviously one of the smallest on the market. It gives us a lot of room front to back to kind of adjust that. Now, one of the main reasons I did that was because there's a couple plunger holes inside of the slide as we, talk, we talked about at the beginning, the largest button plunger um, being the deepest hole. So, uh, you know, at some point in time, if you cut an optic that requires you to be that far forward, let's say a Venom, um, you're, you're gonna be cutting above that hole. So the number one question is, is how deep can we cut before we hit it? And keep in mind, the holes aren't square, okay? So when you take these pegs out, um, or these plungers out, there's a spring underneath them, and then the plunger itself is usually a pretty flush cut, so it's square on the end. But the holes are not. The holes are usually dome-shaped. So when you cut into one of these holes, you're actually hitting like a, a kind of a, a curved area on the top where the plunger would actually never hit. So in some particular cir circumstances and cases, you can hit that and you're not gonna have any problems. Honestly, you can probably go way into it and you probably won't have any problems because the plungers usually don't go that high because of the spring. But we do try to stay away from that if we can. Now in this particular case, we did hit, let's see what we can see. We're gonna, we'll obviously add some pictures. We did hit the edge of that hole right here. Not a big deal. Something to take into consideration is on the uh, hollow sun, it's a sealed bottom optic. Okay, so there's there's no way for anything to get into there. Um, I wanted it because I wanted the depth of cut. So I wanted to get it down as far as we could to the center bore of the, uh, the pistol. We want to get it just the lowest as we possibly can to make it sit the best that it possibly can. And one of the main questions was, does it co-witness with the factory sites? So the only way to figure that out is cut it. Um, ultimately, uh, let's put it on there. I'm gonna show you guys what we have. We'll add some pictures. Um, once again, getting back to that hole, I probably wouldn't recommend hitting the hole if you're doing something like a Venom, because there's a, there's a, um, I think I'm lying to you. Well, a Trigicon, which we're not putting on here, a Trigicon has a, a battery on the bottom. The Venom, or maybe it's the Viper. Um, not the Venom, it's the Viper, now that I'm thinking about it, sorry. Uh, has a battery on the bottom. So you probably wouldn't wanna hit that hole if you had an open bottom optic, um, obviously the, the, the Romeo Zero has an has a open bottom on it, so you're not gonna wanna do that even with that small optic. You'd probably wanna recess this back, which we've done a, an adjustment on our measurements so we don't go that far forward, and, uh, and then you wouldn't have a battery issue. So it's, it's just something to take into consideration. We do try to look these things out for you. Uh, we try to make good choices ultimately for you. We, we understand you guys aren't machinists, you're not gunsmiths, you're not, you're not any of that, you're, you're users of the product. So we try to make sure that we're uh, giving you the best quality service for what your request is. Um, let's put the optic on. I'm gonna tell you already that this is pretty much a direct fit. So these are, they're kind of hard to get in. It actually, I got lucky and it slipped right in. Um, they're, they're a very tight fit the way that they go in from you know front to back, there's, there's no play. So if you don't, if you end up getting this in here and it doesn't go straight and you're like, man, this dude cut this and it doesn't work, it's because you need to be exact. Usually if, if one end goes in first and the other end, you try to put the other end in, it, it will not go in. You usually have to uh, get them both to start at the same time. So this is pretty much our setup with what we have. There's no screws in here, so I'm gonna just kind of hold it. You're really not, you're really not gonna get a, um, a co-witness off of the factory iron sights. You could probably, use it as some sort of an alignment tool, like, hey, yeah, it's close, my eye can get within range and get you there, but let's be quite honest about it, and that is there really is no co-witness with the factory rear 
to the optic, to the front, it really doesn't exist. Um, not in some sort of a lower third kind of mentality of what you guys like where the, the iron sights are in the lower part of the glass, they're able to be used, they're not obstructing a view. We're really just not getting that. Um, it doesn't surprise me as most weapons that come from the manufacturer that are not optic ready don't come with sights that are tall enough to do that with. Um, the only one that really some companies can do that with is like the P365 and you got to cut the rear optic really low in order to get there. So low you have to actually hit the plunger hole in order to get to that depth. Um, once again, especially with something like the uh, RMSC or the Romeo Zero, I don't recommend that because you're just exposing dirt and grime to the bottom of your battery and all of your electronics. Um, but it is what some of the other uh, companies offer. I just I just don't agree with it. With that being said, guys, you know, overall, I really like the design. Let's talk about some of the stuff that could probably be um, done to this with it being such a small slide. Let's, let's see, talk about our options. Obviously, we already went down the, or went through the rundown of, the, of our optics and what works. This front zone here, um, definitely you could probably sneak in some Raptor cuts. Top window is definitely a possibility. The Cobra nose is definitely an option. I think if you guys look at our older patterns, we have a couple of the G3 uh, builds out that come out and they kind of go over here and then they go around the Taurus and up and they shave this zone. I could maybe see that, you know, maybe doing a, a modified version of a shave on the side with a single window with a Cobra nose. I think it's a possibility. Um, maybe whenever we get ourselves a firearm in hand, we want to test it a little bit more. Every once in a while, we'll get one of you guys that's like, yeah, do your thing. And then we'll kind of just budgeted it out where we think it's going to be and then we'll we'll take a stab at it uh we're not the company that's like oh we went over budget it took too long took too much time we're gonna have to bill you more whatever i tell you it is it, it pretty much is if i take a loss there that it was on me had nothing to do with you so if there is one of you guys that's like i really want to see what these what what the possibility is for these side windows um when the time comes and the availability is here we, we would probably approach that and see exactly what we can do and try to get one of you guys in the system uh, we do call it as one of our premium packages on the g3 because it has a ton of work ultimately i really like the pistol itself it's pretty small let's talk about this color this is our black yeah it's interesting right so the idea behind it is that in the past we've had several different versions of black we've had elite black we've had gun coat black we've done uh armor black we've done uh graphite black there's been so many of them i don't even i can't even keep track of all of them and this is the one that we ended up settling with. So now on the webpage, it's called black, okay? And we did that because it keeps us from stocking like six or seven different blacks and people don't know what they are. Can you send me a picture of the armor black? Can you send me a picture of the, you know, the, the gun black? Can you, you know, all this other stuff? And it's like, no, let's just get away from it. So this is more of a matte black. Um, this is a different product altogether. It seems to be more durable than pretty much all of them. We've done some independent testing here with some local guys that do some matte shooting. And I'm like, hey, Give me two of your guns. I'm spraying them with two different colored blacks. Tell me which one holds up, which one doesn't hold up. We're going to clean. We're going to sandblast. We're going to do everything at the same time. Use the guns roughly the same and just kind of tell me what, um, what results we're getting. And uh, this ended up being the most durable. In fact, so durable that we've never had anybody come back to date with a complaint about it. So, which speaks volumes because we have had, uh, black is usually the most durable color, but we've had blacks come back from Cerakote where people are like, hey, it started to rub off because, you know, I soaked it in my tub with 75 gallons of salt and for some reason it peeled off. Or I sprayed it down with Elite, you know, hops bore cleaner and for some reason it pitted the metal and your coating came off. And I'm like, yeah, let's not do that. So this happens to be one of the most durable blacks. We really, I mean, any coating is going to wear, your factory coating is going to wear, right? We all know that. But the point being made is that it doesn't seem to have the um, the flake ability or like the rub ability that you get with Cerakote. So with uh, Cerakote is really good. I, I really love the product. But as as a person wanting black, um, this is probably your best choice unless you want to go straight up with black nitride. This is a very close comparison to black nitride, which is one of the reasons we chose this because somebody says, hey, I've got some aluminum magwells or some buttons or some whatever, some rear caps. And I want to match it to my slide, but the slide's going to be black nitride and we can't black nitride aluminum. So we'll uh, mix these two, uh, this with black nitride. So the, the, the uh, overall appearance is very close. So that was one of the other reasons. But durability wise, it really seems to be, um, seems to be where you want it to be. Trust me, I'm, I'm super happy with the product overall. So, um, so that, this is our black. No, we don't really give out the information of what that is. I know there's a lot of you gun guys are like, well, what's, what is it? How do I get it? How do I spray it? How do I offer it to my customers? 
it, we've gone through the testing of it, so we really just don't give that information out. Um, we have a couple other colors we're testing now in case you guys, you know, in case the consumers or your customers, the customers want to have something done. But as far as um, the other uh, gun providers, we, it's just information we really don't give out um, as far as it goes there. Guys, let's talk about the channel. Man, we have just been... Um, We've just been behind. We've been in the process of moving from point A to point B. We've been moving machines. We've been setting up machines. We've been working with the electrician to get 220s in and 120s in and all kinds of other power things. We've been putting lights and we had to move safes. We have to get counters. This is stuff that we didn't do. This wasn't this wasn't really in the business of working out of your, out of your home. I mean, I've got machines here. I've got sandblaster cabinets here, but all that stuff has to be moved. All that stuff has to be replaced and bought and upgraded. So we're in the process of going through all of that. Hopefully we will uh, take you on somewhat of a, a small tour or at least a couple pictures um, as this progressive, as, as we get a little bit more progress into it, I guess is the best way to say that we are waiting on um, some licensing to come through or waiting on some scheduling things. So um, we have a ton of stuff going on right now. So uh, YouTube has kind of been put on the back burner. We do apologize about that, but you should hang tight because we have a absolute ton of stuff in the works, big stuff in the works. Um, not just working on guns this time. It's there's a there's a lot of stuff uh, that's that's going down. So uh, with that being said, um, we'll just kind of see what happens. Follow, subscribe, share, like, let people know, give an opinion, leave a comment, um, write a review. I mean, there's so many things that you can do to show support. We are trying to grow the channel. It costs you absolutely nothing to hit the subscribe button. Uh, our number goes up and it helps other people find us a little bit easier. We would encourage you to do that <clears throat> as, um, as it just encourages us to continuously work on the channel. We see it grow, so ultimately we want to add more to it. Of course, we've taken some time out of our busy day to uh, teach you about things cut work, optics, options, things like that. So some of you guys uh, that are uh, service providers that just want to uh, offer services to your customers, you can subscribe as well. There's still some, some cool stuff. You might see some uh, different cut techniques or something along the line. If you go back through our old videos, there may still be some useful stuff for you, even though you uh, technically are a competitor to us. But ultimately, there's a there's a big market for this, and a lot of you guys just don't live uh, live near me. So. It's not like we're direct competitors anyhow. Guys, if you need anything, let me know. We have a contacts tab on the webpage. We do process orders through the webpage. And uh, feel free to, uh, to see what we can put together on your weapon. And um, we'll just see what we come up with.